Today on Switch to Linux, we're going to talk about the FFmpeg Google discussion regarding AI disclosing bugs and vulnerabilities and look at a couple different angles of this. So uh, stay tuned. Welcome back to Switch to Linux. If you like this type of content, subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. Leave us a like and a comment down below. And today we did want to talk about um, this disclosure. Now, Google has a AI system which hunts around for code and finds vulnerabilities. Now, is it fully AI or is it mostly AI? Is it partially AI? Is it working? Is it slop? These are all questions that need addressing. However, what happened in this instance and what sparked a debate is their AI model identified a bug in a so rare codec that I'm not sure it's used anywhere else. It impacts 10 to 15 frames of a video game from 1995. And since FFmpeg wants to play every single video file, they have somehow figured out the code to get this thing to work. And the challenge we have with that is that there is a vulnerability in an obscure assembly language. And Google wanted to disclose this bug without providing any fixes. And therein launched the debate. I think the best write-up of this came from the news stack. And uh, having a look at this, FFmpeg to Google, fund us or stop sending bugs. And there are some things to be said on both sides of this debate. And what I liked about this one here is it included some other FFmpeg developers who actually disagreed with FFmpeg's official statement on their uh, X page. So I want to talk briefly about that. So what is going on here, of course, uh, if you are unaware of FFmpeg, this is a... Uh, this is basically the universal open source application that effectively decodes every form of media you've ever interacted with. Whether it's going to be Google and all the YouTube videos or Rumble if you like over there or Netflix or Hulu. Pretty much if there is audio or video going on in some form of web-based server, FFmpeg either now or at some point in time in the development of that project has been involved. It is an absolutely amazing application, which is all put together by developers. And you've all seen that meme probably where you have this giant corporate structure and uh, it's being held up, propped up by this one little peg, which is volunteer code. And some memes say by some coder in Oklahoma, you know. Uh, and the reality is, is that FFmpeg is a massive project uh, that is used everywhere, yet it is a small volunteer team. And so bring in Google, who is, of course, a massive global national multi-trillion probably organization at this point in time. And uh, they have a new AI project. Is it Project Zero, I think is the name of it? Uh, I got to find the name of it again. Uh, yeah, Project Zero. So Google's Project Zero, which utilizes AI to look for code and find these. Now, to be absolutely fair to Google, it did not find a fake bug. It was not an AI hallucination. They reported a bug to the smush codec inside of FFmpeg, which could result in a vulnerability. And unfortunately, that codec is only used in that one LucasArts film video game from 1995 for only about 15 to 20 seconds. But hey, FFmpeg supports it, and that is incredible. The challenge is, is that they reported this, and... I think the biggest debate here is maybe Google needs to look at their disclosure circumstances and maybe adjust that a little bit. Because what ended up happening here is that Project Zero has a system that works wonderful when they're dealing with other global you know, corporations, you know, if they, def they find a bug in Microsoft or a bug in Apple, uh, maybe a bug in Netflix or something, their system works great. What it does is it finds the bug, reports it, and then automatically inside of one week, it will report a bug has been disclosed. And then in 90 days, it will release the bug. This is fairly standard. 
Now, if you're somebody like Microsoft and uh, you always have this massive team of people that are allegedly looking for bugs, although the way some of these bugs show up at Microsoft, I think they might have laid them all off too and headed over to AI. But their system would work great for another massive team which has all these resources dumping things into it. And then what happens is Google says, hey, we found a bug in the code. And then one week later, we're going to disclose it. And then 90 days, we're going to have a fix. Typically, a company is going to have plenty of time to get that fixed. They might even have it fixed and patched before the disclosure even happens after that first one week. That works great if you have a uh, another global national corporation. And don't forget, I mean, Google tends to operate like this. Look at the way their software works. If you've ever tried to use Google Analytics or something like Google Ads or anything like that on a lower spec computer, just even a mid grade computer from Best Buy on the internet you get in the sticks. It does not work well. Google seems to assume that everybody is using the highest end computers on the fastest gigabit speeds possible. And as a result, their products end up sucking a lot. Trust me, <laughs> I have variable internet, even where I'm at right here as I record this. My internet is not particularly amazing. And I'm recording like I do a lot of my video prep on my Raspberry Pi computer, uh, including uh, running ad campaigns for clients and web design. It is a hard thing. The Pi 5, way better than the Pi 4. I got to give it that. All right. Uh, the challenge is, is that that form of disclosure model where you have one week before we disclose it and 90 days to release it, well, is that too much to ask for a volunteer team that has other things to do? They even talk about um, uh, LibX uh, application up here. Was it this article or the other one? Yeah, down here. Uh, the LibXML2. This is highly used in a lot of different projects, uh, like web browsers and a lot of different projects are using this, yet it's one developer who's all volunteer and he's like, eh, I don't got the time to deal with it. So he's resigning at the end of the year. So we'll see if uh, this application is uh, picked up by somebody else. But it raises the next fundamental question. Should these big companies be supporting these projects that they're utilizing that become core functions of what they do? I mean, you think of YouTube. FFmpeg is a core function of what YouTube does. You think they might want to support them a little bit more. And that raises that question because one of the challenges with corporations, they have a fiduciary responsibility under SEC law that says that they have to enrich the shareholders above all other things. Well, supporting a free, uh, free and open source application or just using it without any cost. You know, there's a business decision. Are we going to support this project or are we just going to take the project because it's released to the public and we can do it? Yes, they are legally right to do that. But should they be supporting the project, sending back code or whatever else? That really, I think, is the fundamental question that is oftentimes being asked. Now, uh, the actual uh, the actual debate happened here. So um, uh, some of the, the 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 main person doing the communication is. Um, kind of mad about this. So lively debate on Twitter began between Dan Lornick, CEO and co-founder of ChainGuard, the software supply company, security company, the FFmpeg project, Google, and security researchers over the security disclosures. Core discussion revolves around how vulnerabilities should be reported, who's responsible for fixing them, and the challenges that arise when AI is used to uncover a flood of potentially meaningless security issues, but at the heart, about it's about the money. Now, uh, let me actually jump over. Oh, actually, down here is a uh, good right. I was going to jump over because I think the other article summarized the issue better. Latest episode sparked when Google's AI agent found an especially obscure bug in FFmpeg. It is a medium impact issue of an FFmpeg, an issue with decoding LucasArts smush codec, specifically the first 10 to 20 frames of the Rebel Assault 2 video game from 1995. Well, there's an error in that. FFmpeg says the uh, they aim to play every video file ever made. That's good. However, uh, it's also assembly language, much more difficult to work with. They say the challenge here is that they released this and they called it F uh, CVE slop saying, hey, 
You're using AI to find really small, obscure bugs that will probably not impact anybody and disclosing it without any bug fix. And that's at the core of it is that maybe if it is a freely available uh, software package, maybe they should provide at least a little bit of troubleshooting for the bug to pass that over. Is that too much to ask for? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, so they say here, many in the uh, MPEG community argue with reason that it's unreasonable for a trillion-dollar corporation like Google, which relies heavily on FFmpeg and the products, to shift the workload of fixing vulnerabilities to unpaid volunteers. They believe Google should either provide patches with the vulnerability reports or directly support the project's maintenance. And when that, I tend to agree with that. If you're going to use this because it's low cost and making a trillions of dollars on it, maybe you should think about it, especially if it's core division. In fact, there was a further uh, discussion with Amazon uh, because Amazon was utilizing one of these systems and somebody ended up having to tell an Amazon VP. I've got to find that one here. I've got to find that one. Uh, so... <laughs> Here you go. Um, Mark Atwood, the open source policy expert, pointed out on Twitter that he had to keep telling Amazon not to do things that would mess up FFmpeg because he had to explain to his bosses, they are not a vendor. There is no NDA. We have no leverage. Your VP has refused to fund them and they could kill three major product lines tomorrow with an email. <laughs> okay. Which is true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're just done. <laughs> and then all your vulnerabilities stay. Uh, because if you don't appreciate people, maybe they just stop. That's a thought. And so um, with that, you have to have that particular question there as well. And so uh, not everybody, however, agrees uh, because there is there are some people who actually do work with this. Not everyone agrees that Google hasn't contributed enough. Uh, Michael Niedermayer, a lead FFmpeg developer, tweeted, I am the main developer for fixing security issues. I fixed over 2,700 Google OSS fuzz issues. I have fixed most of the big sleep issues, and I disagree with the comments FFmpeg has made about Google from all companies. Google has been the most helpful and nice, he says. Why? Because identifying bug fixes in places you didn't see them is indeed useful information. So he adds in an email that creating and publishing software under an open source license is an act of contribution to the digital commons. Finding and publishing information about security issues in that software is also an act of contribution to the same commons. And so uh, the position FFmpeg X accounts is that somehow disclosing vulnerabilities is a bad thing, he says. Google provides more assistance to open source software projects than almost any other organization, and the debates are more likely to drive away potential sponsors than to attract them. So there are indeed people who look at this situation and say this is fine. I guess, though, where do we go with this? Number one, we have to recognize that a lot of these trillion dollar corporations who by the way are very anti-consumer rely a lot on freely available code and maybe we need to bring that into some of these consumer rights situations uh in fact there was an excellent uh, article i i saw the other day uh there's a video i think i can't remember wh which one it was I so many different things that i've watched but they pointed out that all of these big companies which are going super anti-consumer rights right now Every one of them have been propped up by technology that was either freely available or even government funded. I think it was an art. I think it was a video actually somewhere around the lines of says there should not be any trillionaires or something like that. I, I can't remember what it is or billionaires. Uh, and they were arguing that these these people, uh, your Bezos, your Musk, your you know all these guys have made their billions of dollars mostly on publicly funded research. And because all of their profit has been made on publicly funded research, maybe some of that fund, those funds should go back into the public. There is an argument that can be made for that, which is an interesting thing. Um, however, I, I want to, I want to resist being super direct to say, take it all away because yeah, that starts getting a little bit more communist. And once you start doing that type of stuff, well, you start disincentivizing development and innovation at all. And so 
Those are fundamental questions that we have to address there as well. And so ultimately, with this situation, I think that should these big companies like Google, like Amazon, like Apple, if they are utilizing freely available code, should they not either financially support the project or submit more code back or not? That is a fundamental question we have. And to be fair, Google does indeed contribute to a lot of open source projects. That is something that is factual. Their entire net zero project is about finding vulnerabilities so vulnerabilities can be uh, can be addressed before hackers find zero days. And so there is a lot of discussion here. But I do agree with some of the FFmpeg developers that says, if you are a company with this many resources, why do you push finding the solution for the bug on us under such a short deadline? So perhaps they just need to adjust the policy. If they are submitting a bug report to a major corporation, their policy is probably appropriate. One week to disclose something to a company that has millions of dollars in budget to security researchers is probably enough. But if you're going to be submitting bug fixes to an open source project, perhaps give them a little bit of help, a little bit more time, and a little bit more leeway in uh, in doing those uh, those submissions. Now, does that mean we have a potential for having a few more uh, vulnerabilities out there? Um, I don't think it is. It's just, in fact, I think it will increase security because if they're not releasing that there is a bug, then give those open, the, the, the developers who are doing this as hobby projects, give them time to address it before the disclosure is made. Otherwise, you have just turned the entire hacker community like the eye of Sauron onto some project that you say, we've found a bug in it. Ha ha ha. And if the developers haven't had a time to patch it and push it out, eh, maybe you should probably not disclose it as quickly. And so I can see both sides of the argument here. And it is a very interesting discussion in the open source world. So let me know what you think about that and uh, all these things. Uh, who's in the right here? Is it Google, FFmpeg, or the other developer at FFmpeg? I don't know. There's a lot of things going on. Anyway, let me know your thoughts about all these in the comments down below.